Department of Homeland Security has issued a bra moment warning for the following districts, Ligma, Sugma, Bofa, and Sugandis. Numerous instances of bra moments being triggered by cringe normies have recently occurred across the continental United States. These individuals are believed to be extremely dangerous and should not be approached. Citizens are instructed to remain inside and lock their doors. Under no circumstances should any citizen say bra in reaction to actions performed by a cringe normie, but to store the following items in a secure location. Jaw coins, V-Bucks, Gekume's foreskin, poop socks, jewel pods, ball crushers, and dip. Remain tuned for further instruction. Bah. 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 Oh, you go to, you go to college, party, okay. You go to college, okay. Gay, 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 gay. You, you go, go to college, college okay. Gay, gay. Yo, yo, yo. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy Matt. You're listening to Lucrative Degeneracy on 91.7 WLFR Pomona. Stockton University Radio. I'm out of breath. I'm anxious. I'm anxious because it's a very special day today. I get very anxious on special days. We got some old friends of mine in the studio with us today. We got half of the only way, Tom and Bugs. You yo yo, what's going on? How you guys doing? Excellent, man. How you doing? I'm glad I'm not the only one who's anxious. <laughs> good, good. So, <laughs> so, bugs. We're mainly gonna be uh, talking about you today. Don't worry, Tom. You'll get your. Uh, That's all right. You'll get your spotlight. I promise. Every bug has his day. Good to me, exactly. Dude. <laughs> so, not. I don't know how many people actually know this, but not only do you drum for the only way, but you also rap. Yeah, I do everything, pretty much. That's incredible. That's what we're mainly going to be talking about today. So the first thing I want to know is, how long have you been rapping? I actually thought about this the other day. It's been like seven years now. Really? Seven that I've been taking it serious, yeah. Oh. Well, how long have you been doing it, period? Like, is there a period like you've been... freestyling and just messing around since I was like 12. Oh, wow. That's but amazing. That wasn't anything serious. That, that was fantastic. goofy. So since you started taking it seriously, like uh, like these, I've been looking, listening to some of your songs. I mean, the beats sound really cool. Thank like you, who uh, who produces them? I actually just meet them randomly online. Oh like, really? I, a, a while ago, I was doing the YouTube route. I'm sure a lot of artists have, but once I had a little catalog, that's when all the other producers started sending me their beats. Mm. So that's so pretty like, much how I get all of them. You started like like getting like royalty free stuff. Yep. from YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Oh I, no no no! I was I was just making music just to make it, just to find what sound I I like the most, which oh. is which is every sound. Okay. But once I had some music that people heard and producers, that's when they reached out to me and sent me like beat packs, beat packs of five or ten. Mm. Very and nice. That's where I'm at now. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. And who were some of your biggest influences, or like flow, or even like beat sounds? Like, where does all that? come from it definitely as far as beats and sound missy elliott and timbaland like mm -hmm. when i was young they stood out the most to me as far as sound as far as flows ludicrous back in the day he ludicrous. was killing shit so hey ah uh, i'm sorry i'm anxious <laughs> that's one buddy <laughs> i'm anxious but uh yeah, yeah. That, all right those three mainly yeah nice very nice are you Signed to any labels, or are you just ind completely independent right independent, now? Independent, yeah. Everything I record is mine, too, that oh. I do, so everything's by me. Very nice. Do you plan on getting signed anytime soon, or do you want to just stay independent if or not really right sure yet? If something came around, maybe, but okay. I feel like I have a formula set up where I can figure it out. Okay. So, like, out of... You said Ludacris was a big influence. Who was the other one? Missy Elliott? Missy right? Elliott, yeah. Like, who out of your influences would you say you listen to the most today? Um, I like, actually don't really listen to music much. If I listen to music, it's just jam bands. Oh. But I make so much music, so to be okay. completely honest, I don't really listen to much. But well, obviously, when a throwback comes on. All right. Well, good news. <laughs> We're going to listen to a bunch of music right now. Bet. And this first one is yours. We got these days lined up. And Tom did the solo at the end of this song, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. Indeed. And the riffs in it, the guitar you hear is Tom. Very nice. Very yep. nice. Do 
do you are you featured on his songs often or like just he's got me on a fair amount and we're definitely looking to collaborate more but uh it's definitely an interesting and much different process than certainly recording but definitely just creating music that with a whole band because mm-hmm. uh with the only way we still have hip-hop influences definitely because all four members have a different genre or artist of hip-hop that we all enjoy mm-hmm. um but coming in and having uh a guitar riff or a progression of chords sampled and then placed and pieced apart in different spots into Bugs's creative vision something that i don't have at the time when i'm playing it is always very interesting because i'll be like I'll be just like warming up or I'll play something. He'll be like, all right, I got it. And I'll be like, got what, bro? I'll be like, what do you mean? And then he'll show me what his vision was with what he took out of what mm-hmm. I performed for him. Very cool, very cool. All right, Bugs. So what can you tell us about this song? What's it about, man? Um, anybody who makes music or is a producer, engineer, they know that they're usually stuck inside. And mm-hmm. that's pretty much what it's about. I love performing. That's where I want to be on the road, every musician's dream. But mainly since I record, engineer, and all that myself, I'm usually just stuck in the room. Okay. That's pretty much what it's about. Yeah, like I even have, I think this is uh, the chorus. These days I'm a homebody, or I'm a homebody. Mm-hmm. I got no love for nobody, or I got love for nobody. Mm-hmm. Does that include the homies in the only way? You got no love for them? What's wrong with you? No, dude. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> That's the bra warning right there. That's a bra moment right there. <laughs> Hit him with the bra. Nah, Hit nah. It's bra. more like it's always just looking into myself. Okay. It's always a battle with myself. Okay. All right. Understandable. All right. Well, we got These Days by Bugs coming at you. We also got Suicide Boys. We got Bones. We got Puya. And we got Smart Death coming up. Do not touch that dial. You're listening to Lucrative Degeneracy on 91.7 WLFR Pomona, Stockton University Radio. This is These Days. Bye, Bugs. Enjoy. These days I'm a homebody. I got love for nobody. These days I'm a homebody. I got love for nobody. Days I'm waking up late, never see what's meant to come. Fate, I can breathe this out, I'm suffocating. But believe I die a lovely ending, and I wonder when my time will come. Stuck inside a mindless dump. Y'all can stay, I'm fine with none, and I wanna run till I see nothing but love. I grew up with tons of fun, but nothing to hold, and I always knew I would end up alone. Maybe I just overthink what's always known. Maybe I should cancel this and stay at home, but I won't. I'm gone, it's time for me to go, and I owe it to the fans who made me grow. Realize I didn't do this on my own. Turn to be gone. Listen to bugs. It's what I do. Y'all doing basic. I gave you your time for a buzz. Now your time are buzz. I'm coming up, and until they notice, you'll only see me in the cut. Rolling the Dutch, making a bunch of vibes. We living our life to a sun. These days I'm a homebody. I got love for nobody. These days I'm a homebody. I got love for nobody. Now these days I'm a homebody. I got Been waiting, don't say I'm impatient. One way I can say this is your hate is contagious. I, I, I've been trying to find another way around, hoping you would stay a while. But I realize you why I'm staying down. Now it's time for me to go and face the facts. Loving you won't get it back. I just need a space to stay at and relax. No time, no time. Now I got no time. You used to be mine, but I caught you lying. Oh my, oh my, what to do with life? But, but you ruined my trust. This must be suicide. A homebody, I got love for nobody. These days I'm a homebody, I got love for nobody. Now these days I'm a homebody.
Y'all you know, just heard it's been a long time since you said that you miss me by Smart Death and Wicked Face brings eternal. 1,000 Rounds by Puya and Ghost Mane. Rest in Peace by Bones. Carrollton by Suicide Boys. And These Days by Bugs, who we got in the studio with us today. Yeah. 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 We also got Tom, who is in the only way. Hello. As well. <laughs> I know he's gonna say hello. <laughs> so. Hey, what's up? Bugs. What's up, dude? You're a New Jersey native, right? Yeah. What's your opinion on the New Jersey rap scene? Because I really don't know too many, I don't know of too many rappers from New Jersey. Hmm. You know? There's so many talented people here. It's yeah. crazy. But it's kind of split apart for the reason being that there's not many venues. So mm -hmm. I did these things called the South Jersey Cyphers, which weren't really only South Jersey. But yeah. that was an attempt to... That was seven like seven years ago when I started that. That's why I consider that's when I started really rapping. Okay. But that was an attempt to connect, see who was serious about it and who wasn't in those towns from Camden down to Trenton, down to Marlton, where I'm from, into Collingswood. That was to see who in what areas was serious about it. And it mm -hmm. connected those areas. And the whole thing was to do main rounds and connect them, which did happen connected a lot of things but at the same time we have to go to philly for venues that are worthy to perform at okay so the scene is here a, a lot of the most creative people are from new jersey it's just we don't have many outlets to go to okay so we run to new york or philly or if i can la or whatever if i mm -hmm. can interject as well um just speaking in general from speaking from the I guess the quote unquote rock and roll side or whatever rich uh, but I just want to say from the original music standpoint mm -hmm. in uh, at least southern New Jersey there's really no outlets in general I can't really speak on it so much as the rapping because obviously that's not me and Bugs would know all about it because he's been in and around the scene for so long but just original music it's a shame in our area like the just like the mainland South Jersey area there's no real spots for or consistent like link of venues for original artists of any genre any genre any yeah genre. so mm. so the thing is like with my band you'd think it'd be easier to get something in atlantic city or yeah. somewhere where they need live music at all times it's not that because they want 90 percent cover songs and mm. and or ska reggae yeah, as like originals. specifically that Nothing because it, that, because it's the beach so that's the one thing with the bands and then Rap is even treated at the venues that you can book and throw your own shows. Rap is treated like, I guess, punk in the early 90s, where it was just like, no, you're not coming to <laughs> destroy our venues, quote unquote. But that's not even what happened. So yeah. it's just a weird thing. Everyone's here. It is connected in small portions, but there is a way to bridge that gap and get everybody on the same page. Yeah, wow. I never really thought about like there not being any venues because like I can name a bunch off the top of my head, but I guess, but yeah, about, it really think about local shows or anything that you hear. It like, really does. Like I never really thought of like them. Well, maybe like a few, like I never really thought of too many of them as like genre limiting though. Mm -hmm. There's maybe like a couple that do that by me. Well, but even a, then you're not going to throw really like a hip hop show at a coffee house. I mean, we've done rock shows at a coffee house. That kind of makes more sense, but it's still a little weird that we're right. raging out, out of place. in a coffee in like a quiet place. You know, that's more of an mm -hmm. acoustic vibe. So yeah. there are settings for certain genres. I do understand that, but it, there's just none for anything. And I'll give, <laughs> like, I gotta to give um, I gotta give hip hop uh, genre or industry or whatever you want to say the crowd uh, credit to because I'll say this: it seeming seems to me that uh, the hip hop crowd is more reciprocating and willing to listen to a rock band that they have no idea come in and they'll give them a shot that's true as opposed to the hip-hop artists going to a rock venue mm -hmm. if that makes sense the crowd are way less receptive of the hip-hop artists coming forward immediately compared to the other way around i mean you mm -hmm. got to be good like someone will call you out if you're not good especially in the hip-hop area obviously you know people are gonna they want to see what's good with you yeah but um if you bring it man uh, they're very receptive and open and open arms to anything that is true when i think about it because i throw shows as well so i kind of have a little insight on all the different areas of where you can and can't do things and every show that i throw is usually all genres like the dj spinning any any type of genre yeah my band a couple other bands and then Live rappers do a cipher afterwards. Yeah. And everybody, it's just a vibe. That's what's missing. The spot for everyone to link, to just have an open vibe, to talk. Because 
social media it's smoke and mirrors it's weird man mm-hmm. and people don't know who's who until they see someone at an event and they're like yeah. oh you were cool this whole time you know how many times <laughs> i heard that and you it's such cool a shame because time, like you yeah heard- yeah you could have come you could have been my friend you could have wow. been my friend hugs wow. love right hugs for bugs yo <laughs> hugs Straight for up. bugs where's your critter sound <laughs> 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 like even like with the venue like there's one venue that's like 15 minutes from my house it's in montclair called the meat locker and like i've seen them they have it. like i've been there a few times for mainly like like grindcore shows mm-hmm. but they do they've had like punk bands they've had stoner bands they've even had like freestyle rap competitions over there Word. so but that's like that's a that's a ways away. Sounds like we got from here, but that's yeah, but that's, Mon- yeah. that's where is that? That's like an hour and a half away. It's in yeah. it's in Montclair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that and, that and that's the point being right there is that again, there's venues to be had that are in. I'm not saying New Jersey's devoid of places to play. Yeah, there's, but it's literally but it's, the closer you get to one of the big cities is yeah. when is when the attraction begins. Whereas Atlantic City used to have its own scene, especially like. I, I'm not good with genre names, but qu- like the quote unquote scene, like the, in the early thousands and the aughts, like when like the emo scene or what I, I don't know what to, what to call it, but yeah. that genre when that was prevalent, there were places to play around here. But mm-hmm. other other than that time, I mean, the last like 15, 20 years, it's like legitimately absent of places consistently to play that have a draw. I mean, the boneyard when I I've been in Build Me Way for like nine years i mean and the the boneyard and fromage were like the only places and they were starting to dwindle when i first got in the band mm. they're going now wow amazing um bugs you mentioned uh you do this thing what's it called cypher right yeah yeah i actually yeah. wanted to talk Excuse about me. that as well because i've seen some videos of it on youtube it's like you guys freestyle is um, it like like what I mean, exactly you can is it freestyle if you want it usually doesn't come out as good as if you have something written oh, okay. as an artist. But do you yeah, usually sal- urge the, people to prepare? Yeah. For it? Yeah. Well, okay. the South Jersey ciphers were different because I went town by town and I wanted I had like a specific lineup. It wasn't like an open event where people could uh, come okay. because background chatter gets in the video, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I would ha- tell them to write. You can freestyle if you want, but write it because we're gonna. We had people vote online. That's how they got to the main round. Okay. So it showed who really was serious about it who not it wasn't about who had fans it was about who was serious about it okay. and um the thing with the ethic ciphers that i'm doing right now is, is a shout out to ethic um on south street in philadelphia the last sunday of every month we do an open cipher so that cipher is different that's when i just have my homie dj fitted on the on the ones and twos just spinning random beats like every 10 minutes they change so if anybody wants to rap on that beat, you just got to run up and grab the mic when that beat's on. Mm. That's an open cipher. So okay, that's a completely different vibe. That's more like a barbecue where everyone can come, whereas the other one, no one can come because it okay. was they would get in the way of all right all the right. shooting process. Okay, very cool. All right, well, but it's only it's literally only to connect people and to see who's dope in reality. And who would want to work with who? You know what I mean? Because, right, like yeah. I said, the social media stuff is all smoke and mirrors. So I would prefer to meet as many as the artists as I can of all genres. Yeah, like I even have a cousin who's in the music industry. Like he's like a professional beat producer. Mm-hmm. And like I try to talk to him about that. And like he's he's told me, or like they even have on social media about people like faking doing this or like faking being able to like put somebody on the spot or just like yeah it's It's it really is terrible yeah i don't like it (laughs) but that's the thing like i'm a musician and i i have to be on it i have to show people that i'm so it's it's just a it's so weird because you have older musicians who will say that like oh well if we had that when we were your age like we would be way bigger than it's not the case because it is really watered down and the not to mention the times are completely different as far as playing period as far as rock being popular yeah all that like th- there's no rock bands right now that's why the only way is the only yep. that's the one you know <laughs> yes. but but as far as hip-hop what's missing is the ciphers that's what brings people together and just because there's showcases a showcase is live talent because yeah, you're showcasing yeah. live talent and it's and different than that's and missing. it's different than a showcase though because people aren't paying when you pay to go to a show right, you right, kind right. of expect to leave with something to be impressed whatever it is yeah but when you come to a cipher, you're like, oh, I'll just go because it's it's cool. And then you're going to leave happy regardless like that. It's 
kind of a psychological thing. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you are going to be impressed because the dope people are going to be, be coming out because of... I make music to live life and laugh. It's a little competitive. And have fun. Too, right? And that's the thing, too. It's competitive, but in a fun way. It's not like a rap battle where oh, people okay. are just yelling at each other, which, I, which I, is I, just I, negative yeah, vibes. Yeah, yeah, that's not fun. Everyone's showcasing their talent to the camera so okay. that they could broadcast it to the world, per se. Very nice. Very nice. All yeah. right. Well, let's get into some more of your music. Yeah, this yeah. song called My Mind. Yeah. Is it, is it your mind or is it my mind? Or is it both? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's everybody's mind. Yeah, I don't oh know. Oh my. I don't know. Everybody's mind. I'm sure we've all, all gone through something like this in this song. Yeah. But shout out to my brother Sife Dublin on this one. Yeah, how to Featured on him. I was going to ask, like, how did you meet up with him? Who is he? Sife Dublin. Oh, he's... The guy behind the whole cipher? No, but oh. I I never met him in a while, but he was the cipher guy back then, too. Oh. We had planned on Lincoln for years and just finally linked up about two years ago. Okay. Shout out to my brother Jimmy D's, bro God, who passed away. But that's how we met, and uh, he's the cipher guy. So, But he's an amazing engineer and producer and does everything, and chops, and he's a beast. So I had this song recorded for like eight months, and I just didn't know... The producer who produced this produced If You Were Mine as well. Oh, nice. So I had both of those songs on Tuck. I was just looking for the features. And Mm -hmm. one night in the studio before I went to Texas, uh, he was just like, I'll just lay something on it. And that was it. I was like, where? Yeah, let's drop it right now. Amazing. And that's what happened. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, if you're listening, you're going to be listening (laughs) to My Mind by Bugs and Sife Dublin. Enjoy. You're still on my What's up? Are you seriously 
Are you watching porn by yourself? Nah, I'm with my <laughs> Lucrative Degeneracy 917. <laughs> WLFR promoting us, Dr. University Radio. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So much feedback coming through these headphones. Is it me? I don't think so. No. That just happens sometimes. I don't know why. Weird. So, yeah. Uh, on that note, guys, did you know that in two days, there's going to be a jazz concert? On Atlantic City Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20th annual Jazz on the Beach. It's free jazz on the beach, guys. On a Thursday. 7 to 10 p.m. Charlie Sepulveda. Wait. Did I miss you? I was helping. No, like I can't. I just can't pronounce this name. <laughs> so, yeah. July 25th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. There's a free Jazz on the Beach concert featuring Edgardo Cintron Latin Jazz Band and Charlie Sepulveda Sextet. I wish you guys could see him reading that paper. Dude. Right <laughs> <laughs> My lord. That was great. My friend that was just on, Ella, said it like perfectly. I don't, I don't know how. I can't. I think it's just because I can't read, honestly. I, I I blame were you college. The kid that got nervous when you were called on to read in class. Oh oh yeah, I, I was the kid that always put my head down whenever said, "Who wants to read next?" Oh, dude, I was throwing my arm up because I could not bear <laughs> listening to some of these kids read. No offense, I'm sure like some people get anxiety when they're talking in front of people. As oh yeah, a kid. but yeah, I was always the kid that was like, "Just let me do it, get it over with, I'll read <laughs> it really fast." Yeah, and I, that definitely helped me in the recording. Because when I write my songs and I'm, I can just get it right away because I'm used to reading pretty fast. Very cool, very cool. That's yeah, great. like even like I've like been there us when I'm in school and we're we have to like read a passage together as a class. I'm like, <laughs> like I would hear kids like struggle to pronounce certain words, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, what is wrong with you? It's just all like, in their head though. It's like not even because if they were reading it alone, they would get through it. You know? Yeah. But it's about just, talking in front of people are like, oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. They're making me talk. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> That's yeah. great. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of words, mm -hmm. lyrics mm -hmm. for your songs, they're mm -hmm. pretty gosh darn cool. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. Where do you find inspiration mostly? Everything. Literally. It's literally Great answer. Everything. <laughs> it's it's pretty general, but that's the easiest way to put it. Because like, like just like the weather is different every day, mm. I wake up. No no matter how my life is going, sometimes my body I'll just feel tired or more excited this day, or just like I want to bang stuff. So that's when I want to drum. You know what I mean? I just want to hit stuff. So you want to bang <laughs> stuff, yeah, hit man. Stuff instead of bang stuff, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's how I make music too. So when it comes to lyrics, it's just if I'm in that mode, or that's when I'm just gonna. They kind of just fall out, okay, with the rhythm, because I guess that's where the freestyling helped. Yeah, the flow the rhythm. And when you hear my fast flows now, now that I said ludicrous, I'm sure you can connect that, and then mm -hmm. the funkiness with Missy Elliott. Yeah, just, definitely. But, um, so, yeah, cool. So I, I also want to talk about I want to talk about uh, somebody else that you have that you, you do features with a lot actually on a bunch of your songs. Uh, Fizzy Hendrix. Shout out to Fizzy. First off, that's an amazing name. <laughs> I wish he was here so I could ask him how he came up with that. Do you by any chance know how he got that name? Uh, I forget. I'm sure he's just a big a big fan of Jimmy. I, like I, I forget. I, he did tell me several times because I'm sure I asked him like <laughs> several times, but. But he'll have to tell you that. We'll come back one time with him. Very cool. Very but cool. um, but yeah, I have a lot of music with him. I met him when I was at a show I threw about a year and a half ago. And the first night we got in the studio, we were just vibing and hanging out. We made Talk Down and like four other songs. But Talk Down was the first one we made. And two days later, we made like four more songs. So before I knew it, in like a month, we had 20 25 songs to choose from wow so we only dropped one project talk down part one which is 10 songs with just we have some other features on it 
time playing guitar on two of the songs actually very nice but um but yeah we, it was just a natural just a vibe he was like how you feel i don't know how do you feel i don't know, i feel like this all right let's make that <laughs> and then that, nice. that's it was just very simple organic because cool. he's that guy uh i want to go back to uh a topic we touched on a little bit earlier that's live performances you know, we, we we talked about like the whole scene we talked about you know like how it's a little bit difficult to be able to book gigs in a certain area just because of like genre mix up and whatnot. But out of all the places you have performed live, where would you say is your favorite venue to perform at? Hmm. I don't know. It's a, we have to categorize the small venues and then the big venues because all the big venues, they're cool because it's a wide open stage and it's mm -hmm. risen 10 feet, but they yeah. don't, some of them don't feel the same. Mm -hmm. But um, my favorite small venue, I guess, because I'm there all the time, is like my second home is Voltage, Voltage Lounge, ah, which is yeah. connected to um the Electric Factory nice. in Philadelphia. But um, yeah, as far as a big stage, um, I it's slipping my mind right now. I don't know why I can't remember remember the name of the venue. I was running a venue in Summers Point called House of Booze about a year ago. A year and a half ago, which is still open, which we're thinking about throwing a couple more shows there again. But um, but that's th that that venue's beautiful. It's huge. Just has a bunch of open space for everything. But I guess my favorite venue, I got to go with Voltage Lounge, just because I was there all the time. Nice, very nice. I've been meaning to try and check that venue out. There's a there's a lot of good bands. Yeah, that have, that have played there. there. That's why I love them. They're they're easy to work with. It's very two cool. people, they respond to every single thing you say. You nice. know what I mean? Very they're nice. not they're not bougie with their work. They're, <laughs> they're about the business. They have shows every single day. Every oh, day wow. booked. So very cool, very cool. Yeah. So what songs do you normally perform most frequently? Um it I change my setup every time. Honestly, because I make so much music, like depends on when the show is. I'll probably throw in a song I made two days before because mm. that's when they're the most fresh. And they feel the best, but Kick Rocks off, off my album Stoke. Kick Rocks. Yeah. That one live gets gets crazy. Everybody usually starts moshing with that one. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I guess uh, I don't have a favorite to perform. They're all my babies. They're all like different different children. I love them all the same. But some songs I don't perform at all though. So if that tells you something about the songs, I guess they just don't. Some don't feel right live as mm -hmm. as much as just listening and understanding what I was doing with the music, you know. What, what songs are those that you don't normally do, that you don't do live? Well, these days I won't do unless I have Tom to do the solo oh, with me okay. because it adds a depth to the to the track itself. Right. So, like when you listen back to that in the chorus, you hear subtly just him palm muting on the chords, on the power chords, and that adds so much to it live. So okay. songs like that I won't do unless he's there. Like I'll do talk down and songs with features and mm -hmm. I'll just chop them all together. So excuse me, say say that they're like, all right, you could perform like three songs. I'll actually wind up performing eight. Oh, but wow. I connect them into into one. So okay. it's the same amount of time as I was were to do five, but I just cut them up like that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Right. It's always different, though. Mm -hmm. Y'all should have seen him reading that one. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure there's a couple of grammar mistakes in here, too. But, you know. It's all good. We're the generation of breaking the words down with spell checking. We have an automatic spell check in our brain. You know what my biggest pet peeve is? That. What? <laughs> you were going to say. It sounded like you were about to take a guess. No, that. Spell check. Yeah, like like in terms of spell checks, but like there's one in particular where like I see this especially on Instagram where people get their yours mixed up. Oh, and same thing with their. Oh my there, god. And we're it it's so it's something that shouldn't get I just under don't my think skin. A lot of them know. What do you That's something we learned in first grade. That's I don't that's know. that's completely unacceptable. I mean, and if everything else around it is spelled wrong, then I'm okay with it. But if that's the one thing that's wrong, then I'm like, oh, you don't know. Yeah. Whenever or they could just be like typing fast and just don't care. 
I think that's what we take the social media stuff too serious. Who cares if they spell the word wrong? I care. <laughs> I don't know why it gets under my skin, but it does. <laughs> All right, at least, you're just, at least you're honest. All right, let it out. Like, I don't, like, I'm not the type of person to, like, comment, you know, the correct word, but it's like if I see it oh, scrolling you past. Should be. You should start doing that. Oh, God. Or no, just start, or just comment, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, very... it'll be an inspirational post, like, you're the best in the world, keep going, and it'll be, the your will be spelled wrong, and I'll just be like, no. <laughs> you know? But why, or you are is cool. If they just do that, they're obviously doing it. Yeah. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> He's so anxious again. He got <laughs> the spell checks. <laughs> my blood pressure's like now because now I'm thinking about the images I've seen online and it's like up in my well, what's anxiety. About, what's going on with the period? The girls are writing period with the T after it, and then a period, like a real period. What I don't do you mean? Know. Like that's final period type thing. Oh, like like they say the word period as like they a period? type in period, yeah, but and put then, a T after the D, and then a period after. <laughs> I've never seen that before, but that's about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's happening, it's there, but who can? Who cares, dude? I mean, I guess it's to convey an accent because you know it's really hard to break down a lot of people's context. Sometimes you might yeah. think someone's angry and they're just saying what it is, what they're doing. I only care about that stuff like on I, I keep that like at the personal level. You know, like I'm not gonna go out of my like I said, I'm not the type of guy to comment the correct spelling on somebody, but like if I see it, mm -hmm. I'll be like <clears throat> <laughs> you know. It just gets you there. Yeah. That's why like that happens with me, but it but that's with like random posts or like negative things that people share. I find myself the past month and a half just literally muting everyone on anything that posts something negative or something that I don't mm. want to see. My, yeah. Literally my days have changed. I like, I feel I'm lighter and like, I don't, cause what you said, like that might be a thing that does just trigger just like, ah, oh, I'm angry. Something to be angry about. Yeah. So like when I started doing that about a month and a half ago, two months ago, just started muting the not unfollowing because people will freak out mm -hmm. if you unfollow mm -hmm. them. So I just mute the people that I don't want to see and keep it pushing. I don't really even scroll that much, but there, there was there's one kid I met through Discord, and we like became kind of sort of friends on Instagram. But then I found out some stuff about him. I'm not gonna say what, just cause it's not worth getting into. <laughs> but um, I was like, oh wow, this he's not a really a great person. I unfollowed him, and then he commented on one of my photos, like, follow me back, please. <laughs> he did he did that a couple of times on my page too. He has a couple different pages. Is I unfollowed that what a both of them. Is? is that a sociopath? I think that's more of like a narcissist. Uh -huh. hmm. no, so like like I don't I I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's why I want I just want to be on the road performing. I don't yeah. want it like I've been stuck in my studios, rooms, everywhere, just making so much music the past. So, like, I've been making rapping for seven years straight. Yeah. But my first official drop was Talk Down, and that was only a year and a half ago. Okay. And then my first official drop before that was the first album with The Only Way, mm -hmm. which was only, like, six months before that. I've only been performing for about two years, two and a half years. Oh, so wow. the ciphers and all that, I just rode that wave for a little while. You know what I mean? But then I really started diving into engineering and mixing all that stuff my, on my own and figuring all that out. But... I don't even remember what I was going to say, to be <laughs> completely honest with you. I started rambling. I had a point. Oh, yeah, it happens, yeah. people. Yeah. Just like your spell checks, it happens. That's actually, uh, that's actually a good segue into <laughs> my next question. This one, it's direct. It's about the only way, but I think you can answer this without, without Tom Thomas being here. I, I still have his mic oh, yeah, on. Yeah, Tom even was here, guys, but he had. <laughs> he, he went, went to go get food, didn't he? Yeah, he's hungry. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Moe's. Yeah. But That's, yeah, he's like, all right. I was like, dude, we got time, go eat. So, but I forgot the questions will be asked. But yeah, we'll be back. So yeah, this this one's a little more directed towards you, anyway. Mm -hmm. This might be kind of like a loaded question, but hmm. would you say you enjoy rapping more or drumming in the only way more? Just, it's I do this for the primal reasons of it, the feeling. 
you know it's mm-hmm. it's really cool rapping in front of people and everybody understanding where your head is at yeah and you being this like it's not even about the solo attention it's just about because rap originally is about a message conveying a message and story so right it's not about any of that for me so when it comes to the primal instinct like i said sometimes i wake up and i just want to hit stuff mm-hmm. drumming it's definitely more fun because i'm actually just i don't have to say a word i can tell you guys how i feel and show it right without saying one word and that's the beautiful thing about instruments, and that's why I like producing and and engineering my own stuff. And because you can curate your brain and show people, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love performing. Like anywhere I'm at, people who've seen me perform, they'll tell you the energy is real. And it's the same thing with the only way. And the only way makes every genre of rock just like I make every genre. Period. So it's just a perfect, perfect mix. But. Very nice, very nice. That was amazing. But yeah, it's drumming better. Drumming's just fun, right? Because I'm literally beating the crap out of, and it's but it's music. Yeah, it's exactly. so it's so weird because like we and I think that's why I'm not angry a lot because I just I physically let it out. Not mm-hmm. only do I emotionally write stuff, I can physically let it out too. But it's still music, so that's so cool. That really is honestly that's awesome. Shout out to Rock Band. Yeah. That's why I drum. <laughs> the video game? The video game, yeah. That, honestly, Guitar Hero turned well, me on to... That started it. Yeah. That that game turned me on to a bunch of the music I listen to now. I didn't even listen to rock until I was 16 years old and I played Guitar Hero. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, this is what they're doing, but on strings? I just got an instant respect for it. Yeah. And that's when I started listening to all the different types of rock Yeah. and got into it. But then Rock Band came out. Like mm-hmm. a year later, and I was like, "Ooh, oh yeah!" Figured that out right away. So much fun, so much fun. It was. Where did that go? It, the latest one, Guitar Hero Live, was just was that one with absolute, the three. Yeah, no, that's whack. Absolute yeah. trash. Go back to just do what we were doing. Yes, and that's what we need. My brother is actually really good at the new one, though. Well, so, I'm sure if you play it a little bit, but it's it's definitely different. The white and black. It's very piece. different, but like he never played any of the older ones, really. Mm. You know, so he didn't have to adjust. He, yeah, no, he didn't adjust. Like that was the, the first. I thought I was going to be able to play guitar. Yeah, and then I picked up a guitar. Well, this is the thing. I I was playing through the Fire and Flames Dragon Force. Hell fuck, yeah, dude! Like four or five days into it, mm-hmm. like so I would I got really good right away, and then I got a real guitar. No, it was not the same. <laughs> but going from the rock band drums to real drums, that was a way more realistic transition. Yeah, I would so imagine so, yeah, with yeah. that. I'm more like a soloer. Like, I can't shred on guitar, but I do, like, I use a lot of pedals and phased out stuff. Mm. Like, same with keys. Like, I like doing synth solos and more. Th- you'll hear in my songs I have a lot of synth solos and stuff like that. Yeah. More than chords put together. Right. Mm-hmm. Very cool, very cool. All right, let's get into some more of your music. This song we got lined up is called If You Were Mine. Yes. Shout out to Carly Underwood. Yeah. This, uh, was, uh, this was produced by the same guy who just did My Mind. Very nice, very nice. He's a piece. So who who is Carly Underwood, and how did you, how'd you uh, meet her? She's a singer. Um, out of uh, Sickleville, I believe, and uh, she was actually on The Voice back in the day. Oh, really? So, yeah. So I knew I knew of her for a while. She did a lot of posted a lot of covers, of songs of her singing online. And one of my buddies that I met through Cyphers was actually planning to do a um a feature track called How We Do, which mm-hmm. is everywhere now. And they came over, I recorded it and engineered it. And I'm not on the song per se. I'm pretty much just the ad libs and the fill in melodies in it. But okay. obviously, that's how a lot of artists meet. And I was like, yeah. I have a bunch of music that you have to hop on. And Very nice. that was one of them. So this is um, one of your latest releases, right? Yeah, I actually just started releasing stuff just because I have... I'm sitting on 12 albums. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, albums? Albums, yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, albums. And wow. I'm just dropping singles right now. Oh, wow. And I, I would, amazing. if I considered like the list of singles that I had, that's about like two albums worth, too. So I have wow. a lot of them. Like I have an acoustic album. I full, I'm playing the guitar and fully produced. And I have a lot of dance hall songs, as you can see. Summertime, it just feels right to drop these right now. Very Stoked cool. was my first album I ever dropped. That was, that was just perfect timing for me. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
now I now I have all this music in a catalog. I'm just I'm just ready to get it all out there. So as far as content video wise, I have a lot of them stocked up and I'm stocking up more before I release any of those. Mm -hmm. But at least I have some sort of catalog on every streaming network like iTunes and Spotify, because yeah. other than that, I was only on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people and this is weird, too. Everybody uses a different app like it's not it's it's evenly split. Yeah. Like I'll get one day. Everybody will tell me they'll take they only use iTunes. And iTunes and Apple Music are two different things, by the way. Which yeah. I kind of just found out. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Spotify. I'll, and then one day people will be like, Google Play. Like, who are all these people using Google Play? Like, so it is evenly spread out between all of them. So, but it is, all my stuff is everywhere. Very Along nice. with the only way. Are you familiar with the uh, platform Bandcamp? Yeah. By any chance? That was the original one. That was yeah. back in the day. Is it really back in the day? Yeah, for, that's been around since oh, wow. I started making music. Yeah, that's right. like that's the one for the artist. That is the perfect website. Like, yeah. I don't think that e website will ever go down. Shout out to Bandcamp. A lot of the bands that I listen to because they in... let you keep a lot of the money too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that a lot different? Of these programs, like for instance, like this is why I want to do shows in ciphers because I want to actually meet people. I actually want to mm. touch people. Right. And it's just a different. <laughs> Want to touch? Me. You can make sorry, it so I'm weird, sorry. so quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. That's your job. But um, no. If uh, I don't even remember. I, f I forget now. You messed Ban me up. I'm sorry. Bandcamp. I have anxiety. Meeting people. I have anxiety. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. Oh yeah. That's why. That's why I like throwing shows, getting people to come together. Because as far as a thousand streams, that's two dollars. Not even that I make. Oh, wow. But if a thousand people buy the single for ninety nine cents, that's thousand dollars. But mm -hmm. but with that a thousand dollars, iTunes or they all take out separate different percentages of it. Yeah. So a thousand realistically is gonna be like eight. <laughs> that's so but but nobody but there's no market for people to purchase. It's just stream, stream, stream. And this goes yeah. into what I said earlier about older rockers say, saying things like, if we had this when we were an upcoming band, we would but you wouldn't because it's so oversaturated. It's yeah. so it's so difficult to even break through to anything, you know? Mm -hmm. And everybody is on their own outlets and stuff. So that's kind of why I'm just really focused on getting everything released myself. Making yeah. it, I don't want to depend on anybody because, like I said, I wake up and feel like this. I'm going to make that. And, you know? Mm hmm that's and so I think cool. That's how it, I think that's how it's shifting anyway for everybody. Yeah. There's a, like there's so many home studios now. Oh God, that's yeah, crazy. Absolutely. Like even one of the rappers I listen to now, Puya, I was watching an interview with him a few years ago, and he was <clears> saying like the same stuff you're saying, where like the most of the money comes from like merch and doing yeah. shows, and how like mm -hmm. it's so much better to be independent and just have a home yeah. studio and be able to release things on your own time when you're yeah. in. A better headspace. Yeah, not not just yeah. That's that helps psychologically. That yeah. helps physically. That you're finally actually engaging and meeting real people. You won't feel like a robot and wonder why you're mad at the world because you're scrolling on Instagram and all this all day and getting these ads and stuff that people post that you don't need to see. Like oh, mm -hmm. my life is better than yours. I'm at the beach today. Or like you don't like regard. Just like you said, when you read something and it's spelled wrong, you, you just it just happens. So you have to try to ch tune all that out. Because yeah. there's, there's going to be a day soon where ads are just holographic things taking up the roads. Oh, God. And we're not going to – you're going to have to pay to take the ads off in real life. Like, mm -hmm. it's, we're, we're the, the generation that got used to this stuff, you know? Yeah. We should be aware of how to like, okay, why am I sad? I need to go outside. <laughs> I need to hug somebody. That's why I say yeah. hug all the time. I, I, I say it goofily, but I'm not joking. Yeah. Like these ciphers are like a barbecue. It's it's really, it's beautiful. You see all different types of art together. And that's the same thing with shows. And that's why there's no community in New Jersey because there's nowhere to throw shows. Damn. Yep. Well, that was, that was amazing. That was an amazing, <laughs> an amazing spiel we just had. It really right was. In. So, all right, yeah. What time is it? Oh, yeah, music time. Yes. Bugs. And Carly Underwood, if you were mine. We also got some Lil Skies, Juice World, Post Malone, and Billie Eilish coming up. I know she's not rap, but I, I love her music. <laughs> you know Billie Eilish? Yeah. I love her. She's awesome. Yeah, she really is. Anyway, If You Were Mine by Bugs and Carly Underwood. Don't go anywhere. 917 WLFR, Pomona. Enjoy. Thank you. 
government to just mow them down mm. honestly and they don't play and uh so yeah lucrative degeneracy 91.7 wlfr pomona stockton university radio i turned the mics on as i said that so mm. for a little bit of context we were just talking about some real deep stuff like uh aliens <laughs> and the uh the quest for america to storm area 51 that's and a little sketchy it it totally is like it started off as a joke but people are like taking I mean, it I've, seriously I've now. I watched footage of like two people on a motorcycle sneaking behind the mountain trying to get in and they turn them around right away freaking out, but I don't know if they could handle a couple thousand or if a couple thousand people are just they're not just going to shoot them all. Well, I mean, but I don't they know might. if they, I don't know if they there's might. gates or like There's got to be. There's no moats. I mean, there's got to be gates with guards or something. I can't imagine and just there's... drive around, but that's the thing. It's so from the, from the sky, it looks pretty simple because it's a desert, but it's right. so spacious and those mountains are so big. Mm -hmm. They're all basically sniper hills, and I don't know. It's weird. It all started because like, but it, realistically, if if we all, all of us, like the entire American went, population, every we could figure any and everything out. I, I guess, but, but the like, traffic. There would be so much traffic. Convenient. It would be like Woodstock. Yeah, exactly. That'd be a hell of a concert, actually. Woodstock at Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, dude. That'd be great. Imagination. That's how stuff gets created. Hell yeah. This whole thing started because apparently it was leaked that the CIA was going to be giving... They were, like, opening tours to Area 51. Like, they were going to make it public. Like Disneyland? Or some, like, I, I guess. Like... They were going to, like, allow people to pay to come in 
and look around. Like a historic place? I mm. guess. Like, I don't, I don't know. That's just what I heard. And then shortly after that was announced, there were people saying, let's just raid well, Area the town, 51. The town right around that is literally based off of the alien business. Like, they're all tiny little oh, stores yeah. that just have a bunch of alien merchandise. I would imagine so. So it yeah. is a business, but it's apparently just this big, empty, sketchy western whatever wherever it is down yeah like i even took a i took an astronomy class here and there we had one class where we debunked like pseudosciences and area 51 was one of them the whole like it wasn't a uf like a it wasn't like a spacecraft or something that crashed it was it was like a secret it was like a new military yeah, aircraft they were working on a new plane. that were like that was like yeah. secret. So that's Nobody the thing knew too, about our it. Our technology is, but that's the thing. Did we get this technology from a spaceship that crashed here? That's one of the theories. Is that no. we learned? <laughs> no, <laughs> we learned how to fly and all the super new technology and stuff. Like, but it is really weird, dude. That's why social media is having such a negative effect on people, and they don't even realize it. Because I was, how old are you? Twenty. Uh, I'm twenty one. Twenty one. All right. So I'm I'm twenty seven. So when I when I grew up, when I was in sixth grade, I was the only kid with a cell phone, but it didn't work. I just had my mom's old cell phone, but oh, I was wow. the only kid with a quote unquote cell phone. Shout out mm. to mama. Mm. And next year I had that same phone. I was the only kid with a fake phone. Everybody had a real phone. Really? So from sixth to seventh grade, it jumped like that. Everybody having cell phones. Oh, wow. And then from eighth to ninth, obviously that's like when the razor and all this weird stuff came out with it that's before the internet was really on the phones and stuff but but just going from aol instant messenger because that's what we would do right after school go home and talk to our friends that we knew at school yeah if we had aol or aim or anything put that into texting which completely changed the the whole flow of school you know what i mean friendships and things like that Mm mm-hmm so now add MySpace and Facebook in 10th grade, 11th grade. Now it's like, oh, this is way different. And just, but I couldn't imagine having that stuff or wanting that stuff since like fourth grade, fifth yeah. grade, you know, I had no idea what any of it was. Mm-hmm. So we're like half and half of both of it. And it's just really weird. Nowadays, kids can do everything. Yeah. They know how to do everything. It's not, not that it's a bad thing, but... Yeah, it's it's so strange because like I got my first cell phone when I was ten. That mm. was the Motorola Razor. Yeah. And um, what grade was that? Like what that was it? that was fifth grade. Fifth grade. See. Yeah. So that's even earlier than I had it, and I thought I was like the yeah the, be- it, the best because I had that. I forgot I can't curse, so I just had to self edit, <laughs> self edit, self edit. Yeah, it was moment. just oh, Tom just messaged me. He's he's walking up now. <laughs> Word. Yeah, Tom was still gone. For a while, eating burritos. Getting, eating burritos and whatnot, but he's coming back now. So that's we should <laughs> just lock face. him out. And <laughs> now you think about it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he said, he's walking up. I don't know how far he is. I feel like if he's walking up these stairs, he's probably like over there somewhere. I should wait for him to come in and then just close the door. <laughs> what was that? Uh, one alien skateboard brand with the aliens. Oh my god, I. What was it? I don't remember. Not Spitfire. That's the flame. Why don't we use the technology we've been ranting about and find oh, out? Oh, you're right. By the Alien. way, I haven't. I got to plug this in. Shout out to Benji and Dirty Politics. All oh, my yeah. artwork for all of my music that's everywhere. All the photos, pretty much all the videos you see is shot by him. It's a clothing line, Dirty Politics. Bunch of accessories and things like that. His new lineup's about to come out. Wasn't he, uh, didn't you say he was like going to be here? He or was, like, yeah, but he got caught up. He's actually a photographer. He shoots at the pool. He shoots at celebrities every weekend, so sometimes he gets caught up uh, having to do other photo shoots. But it's perfect if I bring Tom, though, because he can, if Tom if he get, isn't if he in the elevator. So. But, but, yeah, I had to plug that in. By the way, also, I just got to say, all my social media is Bugs856, B-U-G-G-S, 856 everywhere. My music is everywhere as well, everything you heard. Like I said, I make every genre. You heard more of the, the singy dance hall stuff. We were also talking about how rappers are pretty much just singers now. With, yeah. And they rap sometimes while they sing. R&B mm-hmm. and hip-hop clashed in 2007. And now that's what we have right now. But 
Yeah. Uh, the skateboard company is uh, called Alien Workshop. Uh, let me see. Like, I remember... The tech decks? Wait, Jesus, there we go. The little tech tech ones? I remember hearing about yeah, that they, first they on cool. a... It was a Rob Deerdex Fantasy Factory. Mm-hmm. He had... There was one episode where he got, like, super obsessed with aliens. And he thought about it just because he was, like, endorsed by... Like, by Alien Workshop. Mm-hmm. And he sh- actually showed some of these decks to to somebody who claimed to be abducted by aliens. And he was looking at all of them, and he said that they were all... They all, like, reminded him of what he saw, like, on the ship. What? Or something. <laughs> oh, jeez. And it was... Yeah, that was that was a cool episode though. Yeah, I don't know about that. Like, I want, I do want to believe that there's something out there, but if there is, then I'm I'm sketched out. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's like if we know it, then what will a lot of people do? Will it's, a lot of people freak yeah. out. But there are so many theories about it too. Like, there are some people who just say, you know, like, like you know, like the universe is so vast, there can't possibly not be other life out there somewhere. And then there are other people who go full in like ancient aliens yeah. that think we were like created in the image of like these ancient gods yeah. that we like forgot they about or something. DNA with a monkey or something. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of down with the stone ape theory. How vegetation basically hundreds of thousands of years ago. You guys can look it up. It's awesome. It's pretty cool. I like <laughs> the evolution idea. That's why I brought up like the the piece of that we shot a satellite in space and if it lands on another planet that bacteria on there might thrive in that area and yeah. become the aliens that we always freak out about there he is Yo. here's tom what's up was, dude hey guys what how's it eat? going C- can i throw names of corporate yeah we already like? said shout out to oh, mo yeah. Yeah. shout out mo shout now, out the mo uh well i had the mo's app um I had a, you have a an large... app for it? Yeah, yes, I have an app. See, my that's most cool. Point, my that's most, what phones and stuff my, yes. my most points so are You can work up points and stuff. And the thing that's with Moe's is that that's... I guess they, <laughs> that whoever created Moe's loves music and stuff. That's one of the reasons like, I like Moe's. Oh, wow. Um, that if you go in there, they always have like these mo- like like uh, what's murals of famous like rock stars and stuff. And like so on the app. So the, the aesthetic more, got them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the more. and well, my, the, All right, so all right. Here's a peek into my heart. He's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got we you got me started talking about Moe's. But he's a, here's a peek into Tom's heart. Been since I was like 14. The the trifecta was in Maze Landing. So I'm just shout out to Maze Landing Shopping Center or whatever. I would go to Guitar Center, go to Moe's or no, yeah, probably go to Moe's and then go to the movies because the Regal's right there. Oh wow, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was the three yeah. things. I would always just go. That would be like my thing. I would go hit those three spots in a, in a day. See, I don't think I always think about Moe's is this gotta go to Moe's. I gotta see, go to see, Moe's. See, like I never yeah. heard I never heard of any advertising. I never even Mo knew Dells. what Moe's was. I was like, what is Moe's? And like I was the it one was a like clothing store for awesome big clothes that I used to wear right? in two thousand six. <laughs> I wore triple XL when I was a sophomore. Oh my so goodness. Wow. I remember that era. Yeah, I was I was doing the dances and Yo, all that. Yo, people was was back in that era <laughs> had no never heard of kneecaps oh, yeah, it was before. Bad. Kneecaps well, the, were never seen. Well, early, really, dude, because everyone had them baggy shorts all the way to the was bad, but early <laughs> early nineties, the color schemes were so bad. It's kind of yeah. coming came back to that, which is weird. It's, but yeah, it's weird. just all random bright color schemes. Mm-hmm. It's the and aliens. Like all like everything everything had to match, but like legit match. Like everything was the exact same color. That's pretty much what I did right now. Yeah, but like you still got a little difference. Like literally, if you wore that white tee, like everything had to be like exactly white, like all True. the way down. Yeah. Extra big. Wait, uh, excuse me. So that was the snap your fingers time. What? The snap your fingers. Snap the your fingers. Stat. The little John John. Yep. The little John. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know what these people are talking about. So. <laughs> you don't He's, know who little John is. That's, that's oh, little John. Yeah. That's yeah. the age discrepancy though, because like I know it's that was like summer of like me working at the water park. Yeah, was, like I remember that that summer specifically. Geez. Mm-hmm. Right. Music's weird how they throw songs out there like that. Mm-hmm. Music's just weird in general. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I speaking, love what? Sorry, I just said I love music. <laughs> yeah, speaking of music, you guys got a band called The Only Way. Mm-hmm. In case we haven't already said that a hundred times. Yes. Uh, I want to talk about something that you guys did recently. You guys recently played the uh, Warp Tour kickoff party. We did not. You did not. <sighs> did not. That's not correct. Why was your name we, on the lineup then? We we were yeah, going to play that, but that it. was but uh, that was actually the person who was throwing it that was going to be the one that was promoting it. 
falsely advertised. So we were being nice oh about God. why there's not a scene. Right. This is the the crappy part about the scene. Oh man. Is that there are promoters who don't bring anything to the table and try to take the money and all this from the young artists coming up. That's not even what I'm upset about because as artists, we just want to perform, period. The thing is, we were okay with that show. That's why our name was on the flyer. Mm -hmm. He never mentioned anything about a no radius clause, which means we can't perform anywhere within the two weeks before or after of that show within a 60 mile radius. <laughs> which, yeah, you're laughing, so, right? Which, so that's, what? How, is everybody else laughing who's listening to this? I hope you are. Hold on. That's not, e that's not even the end of it. The next week was when we had the July 4th show, mm -hmm. the Tito show at the Deck of Golden Nugget, yeah. where we had a chance to win 3000 bucks and a bunch of, we came in second place, by the way. We won a bunch of tickets to a bunch of shows, but that was the week after that Warped Tour kickoff, oh you know? Oh, my God. So it's a shame. That's that's well, the problem it been, with it scenes been different. in places. I just want to clarify as well, though. If it had been uh, legitimately affiliated with Warped Tour... Then we could. Then if they had yeah, given us, because the bunny ears that, when I said because that the that, that, that two week clause um, stipulation, that's something that's not uncommon within legit venues. Yeah, legit. But but <laughs> but, but the, and the not to and Bure or Bure, I believe it's pronounced Bure though. Bure is, is legit. I that love, is a I legit. Yeah, absolutely a legitimate venue. Shout I just want to say that's a phenomenal place. But we're just and I, and without getting too much into it because I don't want to delve any more into it because it is what it is. But the person that was trying to promote this event was it was false advertising because that had nothing to do with. Warp tour. So even the gig itself, mm. I had no problem doing. But it was the fact of the deception try and the illusion that, that we were that yeah. not just us, so. not just us, not just Everyone. us, but every single person that played under the banner of this particular event, where was being told and then being promoted and then telling people that it was under Warp tour. So I honestly don't really want to get into it anymore because I feel like it is what it is. But I feel like this is a good platform to at least get that out there and hopefully everyone knows that it but was. That's it was the a crappy facade. part of the scene that we didn't discuss. Right. There's, and, and, there's a lot of weasels in it. And the reason and it's, why it's like that is because it's like the Wild West because there's nothing. So the reason why people can even do it is because there's, there's really nothing going on. There's only one place to scrap on. everything up at and they're right. all battling for the same thing. Right. Crabs in a bucket. And it's a shame because we should all be working together and throwing amazing shows based mm -hmm. on talent. And that's the thing too. Like as far as management, bands back in the day would have managers and things like that that's not really the case anymore so since that's the case we're taking care of all the promotion all the booking things yeah. like that so if there's a person who's throwing a show who's not even a musician but wants to make the majority of the money that the bands from the audience that the band brings that's just it feels feels gross to me you know what i mean it's just I like rough. i don't like throwing shows because i don't want to be put in this promoter spotlight yeah but at least the musicians are making the money you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we can fund it into our careers versus this guy who is going to do this and that. It's a shame, but that's the crappy part about it besides the physical venue issue and things like that. Yeah, and the worst so. the worst part is, is that if, like, you know, the industry is industry. There's going to be snakes, and there's going to be some cool people. Obviously, there's going to be snakes, but at least and if you go in the right places, the, some of the snakes have access and allow you to f go further up the chain and have an opportunity like mm -hmm. a an, an event like this is a perfect example why it can be disheartening because I hope I, I wasn't there. I hope yeah, it the, takes I, a lot of passion away from yeah. The music I hope itself. I hope the event yeah. that night went well for everyone. I hope they had a great time. But knowing that it's not the actual opportunity that was advertised is rough. Yeah, it's sad. You know, so that's stuff like but that. But that's is happening every day, everywhere. There's all these flyers nonstop for people like, hey, uh, apply to this show, send your music in and for free, and we'll select for you to pay. You go to submit it, and then it says, oh, well, you got to pay to be a membership of this thing to get it submitted. So there's all that, all so much of it in every genre. It's it's oh, so nice. It's so sad. It really is, but... That's yep. why the only th issue I think there is is that there's not many venues to choose from because not many people are aware, but it's very easy to throw a show. It's just like throwing a house party or something. And I used to throw like a big house party, so I guess that's where my organization comes in. But mm. but it's very easy. You just make sure you provide it with the good vibes, and that's it. Like you just invite people. That's all. So a lot of people think that there's they got to reach out to this person or they have to know this person or this 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 like me i'm mm -hmm. different you can come to anything that i do any cipher and i'll talk to you for an hour about aliens you know what i mean <laughs> that i'm different a lot of other people are really hard to reach and people that are in the industry yeah people don't realize it's very easy you rent the venue out for 300 bucks invite 
as many people as you can. You get 100 people there for 10 bucks. That's $1,000. You made $700 for putting on a show. Like, it's very easy for people to do it. They just don't realize it. But that's the thing. There's no venues to do it at. So there, wow. is, a, there is a scene for all of it. Period. There's just no specific location. And like, like House of Booze was one. It, it kind of is one, but it's not like what it should be. The you biggest know what I mean? travesty is there's talent. Like, yeah, like books, a lot of, that's I know what I mean. a lot of the like most times, talent comes from Jersey. There's a, like, yeah. like right now, I honestly truthfully believe like, you know how it is too, like not even just corporate, but like at the top of like the industry, they're always like the, the suits are always like, all right, where's the next gold mine? Where are we hitting next strike? And I'm mm-hmm. telling you on some real stuff. Uh, if if they were to come flying here in their helicopters and embed themselves within the scene here, they would see the diversity and talent because people also don't understand that normally with different diversity and culture, which we have because we're a coastal type place, and with some struggle, which economically this area within the last 15 years has struggled to pr- uh, gi- giantly, um, there, comes, there always comes great art. And there historically has always been great art anyway from the Atlantic City area, but... Right now, there's just no spotlight, and then there's no finances or whatever. So, yeah, and I'm not even from around here. So I'm from like a Marlton Collingswood area. So yep. it's closer. To, it's like a half hour to get to Philly from there, and it's an hour from here. But that's kind of like in Jersey. Like it's there's it's just still kind of in the middle of nowhere. You feel like there's nothing <clears throat> around. Down mm-hmm. the shore is different. You can kind of walk everywhere. Yeah. Like so, living down here is a really good change of Jersey pace. If I still lived there, I would probably be miserable making completely different kind of music. Mm-hmm. But I live near the beach, so the vibe, that's why I said the weather thing, depending on how I feel is the music that I make, that's that's the thing. A lot of people just feel stuck. Yeah. And, I, and I'm sure there are venues that are down to do what we're talking about. We just don't know of them. I'm sure there's a couple around here. Hit us up. Yeah, man. Let's that make was, vibes. That was amazing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I had... A little to go on with that. That was like a, that was a kind of depressing spiel on like it's, the reality of the it's, music it's industry. Sad. It's not even it's sad. It, it is unfortunate, but I I don't even look at it as depressing at this point because we've been aware of it for a while. I hope it's in uh, informative. Well, it's always and, been yeah. a goal of mine to kind of change it. Like, yeah, so. that's why the ciphers. My sh- I like pride myself on the vibes of my shows and things that I do because I just like mixing a bunch of random different people together. A lot of people. That's what I'm saying. Everyone can do it. It's just everyone feels like it's just so far. Mm-hmm. So everyone stays far. Yeah, wow. Well. Like all these pockets. But it is really sad when you look at stuff like that because obviously we make the music so we study and practice and play to create it itself. But when we're not, I'm just studying the industry, seeing what's where. Not as far as what's popular, but what are they doing now? Why? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's the same over and over it's just all marketing, you know. It doesn't really even matter about the music at this point. It matters about the marketing, and that's why music you feel in the past ten years has lost the soul, the heart and soul of it. It was meant mainly originated music is to make people feel better and help people and understand whether or at least any genre some, or yeah, at least express something, express true, something. yeah, real. not just not a cookie cutter thing that you put in a box and then I just put it away later. It's something that oh that song brought brings me there. You know what I mean? I'm sure it happens with new age music now, like some yeah, there, songs. There's, there's but still great music out there. That's not yeah. Artists. That's not what I'm saying. There's always good and bad, but. When you see the labels pushing this, what's mainstream, quote unquote, right. and mm-hmm. that's the thing. I don't really. I don't even know what is mainstream now. It's it's just weird. It's up for grabs. So I think that that's the problem is that a lot of people, like there's been so many different directions music has gone historically that now, and it's a good thing. I think that there's a molding pot, just like culturally, even in this country, it's a molding pot of everything. But I think mm-hmm. that in terms of ingenuity, there's not a whole lot of ingenuity. And I'm not saying my band is the, like the first thing you've ever heard. It's not like the first time you heard like the Beatles or in, you know, in 68 or, you know, whatever, something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's the fact that right now I honestly feel like a lot of stuff's up for grabs. And again, if a true opportunity is given, I mean, I'm speaking for myself and my band and then Bugs, I know you can speak for his band and then for himself as Bugs. If true opportunity is given to us, we're taking it because that's a fact. We we want that. (laughs) And we work hard for that. And it's it's real. Yeah. And it's not an overconfident thing. But if you work hard and you believe in it and you just want the, uh, it's not even, 
it's not even when people are like, oh, I want a million dollars or something like that. You know, it's it's of course you want that, but it's, you don't. You want opportunity. Give me right. the yeah, yeah. give me the opportunity, and, and I believe we'll take yeah, it. Yeah, and it's not even that the, a lot of the stuff that we see is like fake or cliche. It's that even if it was a cliche, we we don't believe it or feel it. People aren't even good actors. Like yeah. they're, they're not even good actors in these genres. You know what I mean? Or they're but, not mm-hmm. even genuine. That's the thing yeah, is when that, you see, like Bugs even said too. Like I'm sure, and I, I've seen it being a friend of Bugs and playing alongside some of these hip hop dudes. Like uh, I mean, it's, and it goes in all genres because I've seen a lot, plenty of rockers doing the same thing. But some of these dudes' personas, then right afterwards when I hear them talk or they interact with them, I'm like, dude, you're the complete opposite of what you're preaching about mm-hmm. in real life. It's really weird. And that's that just that does that's not just music though that goes with everybody. Of what we were talking about yeah. social media posting on Instagram and every it's it's weird. Everyone feels the need to portray this and facade. that. Like just I said, I only have these social medias to show the music. Yeah, you know, if I didn't make music, I would not have any of that straight up just to completely stay away from it. But and I, I think a lot of people don't realize how toxic it is. But that's why at least it's I'm sharing the music with it, vibes with it. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the whole thing. And the whole thing at the end of the day is for shows because I want to bring people together and mosh and hug and dance and all that yeah. stuff. That's what it's about. Well, that was that was amazing. It really was. <laughs> Thanks, dude. We're going over. We're going over my our time, which is fine. You're listening to 91.7 WLFR Pomona, in case you didn't know. Uh, unfortunately... Joe Molyneux, with his business advice, interviews, and music, will not be in today. So it's okay if we go over a little bit, which is what we're going to do. Yeah. Especially right now, since we got one more song of yours to play. And uh, we're going to go with this one. You sent me this last night. This one's called Be Mine. Yes. Now. Off my first album, Stoked. Very nice. <clears throat> very nice. So Be Mine. Be Mine. This, uh, during the song... Like, like, are you, it, this is like basically like a love song. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Are you talking to anybody in particular? Like, is there someone you want to give a there's, shout out to? There's, or? A, there's a thing where I used to write about a specific girl, but I found it being either go, usually going one direction in the bad way because the relationships didn't end well. Mm-hmm. But when I had a few relationships that didn't end on a bad note, I could finally write love songs in a nice way. Whereas mm. I'm being mean and disrespectful, I can word it in a way where I'm like sad and sed- like sad and seductive in a way to get it across <laughs> that I'm not, I don't want to be alone. You should yeah. be with me. So a lot of these girls that I'm talking about in these songs, it's a Frankenstein of all of them, including what I envision and the girl I really want. Right. So it's pretty much just like, a girl that's never going to be real. <laughs> Feels bad, man. It's sad. <laughs> well, to quote the Doomer, we're all going to make it one day. Yes. Hmm. Bugs, Tom, thank you guys so much Thanks for, for coming us, in the man. studio. It's great to see you guys again. Great talking to you again. Jimmy, thank you. You're, uh, I just want to say, again, I think I said it first time, I think you're very good at what you do. It's, you're very entertaining from being on both sides oh and engaging. That's and true. I have to say this too real quick. Uh, when I was driving to get said burritos from earlier, <laughs> um, it's super entertaining listening to your little segments, like the little clips in between, like when you, you were oh, like, yeah. oh, what are you, are you watching that with your knock, knock with my, my boys? boys. <laughs> and also, when you, hilarious. You guys were talking about Area 51, but by the way, you did address it, but it was hilarious. You didn't click your thing onto it, so as soon as it comes on, you just hear the government just gonna mow them all yeah. down, <laughs> mow them all down, and you just hear bugs calmly just going, yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, and so I remember I was like, yo, what? And then you did address it, but um, that's yeah, great. so it's great. And but uh, real fast, I just want to say shout out to everyone listening. I know my boy Josh from the Wash Ups, another local band from around here is listening. Yeah, but man. Just want to throw that there. Yeah, I just want to say shout out to everybody, Mama, Papa, I love y'all. Um. The band is the only way, 609, everywhere, social media-wise. We have a website. The only way, That's NJ. the only way, NJ. Me, Bugs856, B-U-G-G-S, 856, everywhere. But on iTunes, Spotify, just type in Bugs. Our but, um, album uh, the, is The Only Way, and our album's called Don't Be Afraid to Speak. That's Don't Be Afraid to Speak. Yes. And That's we on have, all the social media. And I'll be releasing a lot of music to all of these social... I have YouTube, obviously, dot com slash Mr. Bugs, B-I-T-C-H. Yeah, I can't say it. So, mm, yeah. Okay. Spell check. Emphasis. But, um, but nice. yeah, guys, I love y'all. Thank you for having me, brother. Rock Thanks. and roll. Oh, yeah. and I'm an alumni, so Osprey, this one, this one's for the sprays. Cool.
<laughs> you're, you're such a dork. That was amazing. That was an accurate spray call. Awesome. Thank y'all, yo. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys.